What's up guys, my name's Stu, and today we're going over my theory craft for what I'd like to see on a possible legendary Prometheus. That's right, I'm doing another theory craft video because, well, I just can't help myself, even though the last one brought me to the brink of insanity. This one was noticeably easier because I finally have the formatting down for this kind of video, but the downside is that uh, I accidentally erased the spreadsheet uh, for this one on the first go, and I had to completely rebuild that from the ground up, which sucked. Why does something always have to go completely catastrophically wrong with these theory crafting videos? Okay, admittedly there's only been two of them, but still, it's not a good pattern so far. Maybe it's a sign I should stop doing them, but you'll never stop me or my hyperfixations. <laughs> Alright, enough ranting by me. Let's get into it. Okay, this time we are going over what I would like to see on a legendary Prometheus class. Uh, during the last video, a number of you requested that I do the Prometheus 2 if I ever did one of these again, and well, here we are, so I am doing the Prometheus. The Prometheus is a longtime fan favorite from Star Trek, and uh, I mean, you can kind of see why. It's a very, it has a very distinct appearance you know, with the uh, the arrowhead shaped saucer, and has four nacelles, which was still pretty uncommon back in the day uh, when the Prometheus first showed up in Star Trek Voyager. And also, it has the unique feature of being able to split into three separate pieces and be basically a small fleet. There are already a couple different versions of the Prometheus in the game. In fact, one of them goes all the way back to the launch of the uh, Star Trek Online, which uh, I think it was one of the Tier 4 escorts that you get from leveling up. But the one you're, we're going to be mostly looking at is the Fleet Hephaestus Advanced Escort, which is the fleet version of the T6 Prometheus. One notable feature on the Fleet Hephaestus is that, well, it's not full spec, which I guess that's more of a lack of a feature, but that's one of the annoying things about the, uh, the current T6 Prometheus is that it does not have a full specialization. and. I don't know about you guys, but to me, ships without a full specialization just kind of feel lacking in the current state of the game. So, obviously that's one thing I'd want to add to this. Um, though, however, I wouldn't want it to be a command spec, because... Well, for one, I went, uh, uh, I went really heavy on the command specialization on the, uh, the last video I did uh, for the Akira, and that was because I wanted it to be a torpedo build, but also because I don't think command really fits this ship very well. Frankly, I think it works better as an intel ship. Keep in mind, when we first see the Prometheus, it's this top secret prototype, you know, no one knows about it, there's only like four people trained uh, to fly the ship, you know, and the element of secrecy around it, it just makes me think Intel, it just makes more sense. And pile on top of that, that the fact that the ship was stolen by the Romulans to be handed over to the Tal Shiar, that's another level of, you know, why I think this should be an Intel ship. Though I gotta be honest, the main reason I wanted this to be an intel ship is because I'm kind of obsessed with Surgical Strikes builds these days, ever since the uh, the buff to the intel specialization came out and the uh, the legendary Jem'Hadar attack ships trait came out to extend it. Yeah, Surgical Strikes, it's kind of awesome, and I would like to have more ships that I like uh, to be able to use that on. But before we get into that, let's look at some of the other ships that I wanted to kind of compare and contrast to while in uh, making the stats for this thing. Uh, like I said, uh, we've got the uh, the Fleet Prometheus, which obvious uh, obvious choice there. Uh, I also brought up the uh, the old Fleet Akira and the Fleet Defiant, uh, mostly just because they were both featured in that episode and they are escorts of that era. I felt like uh, these these kind of had something to contribute in terms of what the stats were. After that, I mostly focused on other ships that were either Intel ships or uh, had Intel CD on them, and that's when I came across the uh, the Fleet New Orleans class, which is a recon destroyer. After looking this over, I, it really gave me the uh, the idea that the legendary Prometheus should be a destroyer. Destroyers are they're a little beefier than your average escorts. They're actually they're a little bit like warships. In fact, they actually use the same mastery uh, package, which uh, is kind of why I like them so much but there aren't a lot of them in the game. I mean, there's frankly, there's more than I thought there would be. A number of them are on this list, but that number is also kind of padded by the fact that a number of those de uh, destroyers are just alternate faction versions of the same ship. Like, we've got the, uh, the recon destroyers here. There are actually four of those in the game because, you know, there's the, the Federation one, which is this one. There's also the Klingon one and the Romulan one and uh, the Jem'Hadar one. The, those last two were added sometime later in the game, but yeah, they're they're just the, they're all the same ship. Same thing with the uh, the Fleet Manticore uh, Heavy Destroyer. These are these are the veteran ships. So yeah, there's not only are there uh, four tier six versions of these, there's also four tier five versions of these and fleet versions for each of those. So yeah, the uh, the number of destroyers listed on the wiki 
bit padded in comparison to how many there actually are when you actually look at their actual stats. But yeah, the uh, the fleet New Orleans, this is the whole reason why I thought this should be a destroyer, just because they're a little beefier, they have the better mastery package, and again, there's, there aren't that many destroyers, and I think it would be kind of cool for them to uh, make this as a destroyer, because it does fit the, uh, the the idea behind the Prometheus. I didn't want, I mean, I could have made this another warship, but again, I went so heavy with uh, wanting this to be, wanting the uh, Akira to be a warship, I didn't want to just do that again, because that would just be silly. Uh, so... With this one, uh, I thought Destroyer would be a good idea because Destroyers on like warships, they keep their experimental weapon slot. Yeah, after that, uh, I wanted to have another um, actual Intel ship on here too because I did want to make this a, uh, an Intel ship, so I thought it would be good to have one here. So I got one from the Sea Store. This is the Cardassian Tatapa Intel Escort. Um, I did think about bringing in the Phantom as well, but honestly, you know, they're close enough to being, a, uh, they're similar enough, so I figured, you know, one was fine. Uh, the rest of these, up until the last one, are destroyers. So, like I said, we got the uh, the Fleet Manticore Heavy Destroyer, uh, that is from the veteran, um, the old veteran reward system. Uh, these days, the only way to get access to that is through the lifetime subscription. And we've got the Klein Temporal Destroyer, a uh, little bit of a weird one. Uh, this is an old low buy store ship. The Kelvin Einstein Heavy Destroyer, which is actually even weirder. Also, I misspelled Destroyer here. That is. My bad. This is another kind of a weird one. It's from the lockboxes, but the main reason why it's weird is it doesn't have a full uh, mastery. It actually has a commander level universal seat, which I had actually kind of forgotten about. Uh, moving on, we've got the uh, the Tashiar uh, Mandakar Adaptive Destroyer. Again, another destroyer. So I thought this would be good to bring in for the sake of comparison. And one thing I've really noticed with a lot of these is that there aren't a lot of destroyers that have primary specializations, or, you know, ones that are full specialization. Because uh, like the uh, the New Orleans, it only has a Lieutenant Commander Intel seat. The um, Manticore only has a Lieutenant Commander Command seat. Um, the Klein's the only one that is full spec, and that one because that one's double temporal. Uh, the Kelvin has. Lieutenant Commander, Command and Pilot, ugh, Pilot. Uh, the, uh, the Mandakar, what is that? Uh, Lieutenant Commander Intel and Lieutenant Pilot. So yeah, that's another reason why I kind of want this to be a destroyer, just because, like I said, we don't have a lot of full spec destroyers, and that just seems weird to me. The last one on this comparison list is the legendary Talis, which is, again, this one's not a destroyer because, well, there aren't any legendary destroyers, but I wanted to have at least one legendary ship on this list. But it is a, uh, an Intel ship, and it is remarkably close to what I would like to see for the uh, legendary Prometheus. Mainly that it is a escort type ship. I mean, it's not technically an escort because it's a warbird, but it is an escort type ship that is also an Intel ship. Also, those are not the that is not the correct weapons layout for this ship. Remember when I said I had to rebuild this thing from scratch? Yeah, apparently I should have... Uh, gone over that a little bit better my bad okay going back to the legendary prometheus you'll probably notice with the name uh, i called it legendary prometheus intel advanced destroyer the reason i called it an advanced destroyer is mainly because uh the old prometheuses were always called advanced escort it being called an advanced escort really never meaned anything it's just a name that was derived from the original uh tier 4 prometheus which was called an advanced escort because that was just one of the varieties of escorts it's no different than any than any other escort, but I figured since the original one is called Advanced, I figured we'd take that over to the Legendary version as well. But beyond that, it's no different than any other destroyer. However, uh, there is a difference in some of these destroyers because you can see we got the Recon Destroyers, which have uh, low hull and high shields. We've got the Heavy Destroyers, which uh, have pretty high hull and fairly moderate shields. Uh, same here again, another heavy destroyer, and then there's the adapted destroyers, which have really high hull uh, for an escort. In fact, that's got the highest one on the list, but again, that's an adapted destroyer. They're a little weird, so that's kind of on purpose. So I wanted to keep the uh, the legendary Prometheus's hull modifier not quite as high as the heavy destroyers, because I didn't want this to be classified as a heavy destroyer. I don't think it's that big of a ship. I mean, I know that the Prometheus, it's it's about the size of like an Intrepid class. I think it's a bit they're they're a bit bigger than the Intrepid, but yeah, not not a big ship, but reasonably sized for a uh, for an escort. Maybe a little bigger than a, your most escorts. Definitely bigger than something like the uh, the Defiant. Uh, for the shield modifier, um, I didn't go super high. I wanted this to have at least a little bit more than the original, but 
again, because I got the hull modifier a little higher, I didn't want the shield modifier to be too high, so I just gave that a little bit of a buff. The turn rate, uh, I did keep on the little bit of the lower side. Uh, you can see like it's more similar to the, uh, the New Orleans and the Manticore, but that's largely because I wanted the hull modifier to be much higher. You see with the turn rate, I kept that a little bit on the lower side in comparison to most of these others. Uh, the uh, the New Orleans it had four, it had a turn rate of 14. Same with the Manticore, um, and that's kind of why I wanted to keep this on the lower side because I kept the um, the impulse modifier kind of high. Uh, I wanted that because the well the Prometheus it was kind of designed for speed. Like the um, in Message in a Bottle, it was stated that the Prometheus had a maximum warp, fi warp factor of warp 9.99, which that was faster than even Voyager's, which Voyager was known f to being uh, one of the fastest ships in Starfleet. So the fact that the Prometheus is even faster than that, I wanted this to be reflective of that. You can kind of see that the original Prometheus kind of went with that, or the original T6 version of the Prometheus uh, went along with that because it had a... Uh, Impulse modifier of 0.2, which still kind of high, but since this is a legendary version, we can bump that up a little bit. And I wanted speed to be reflective of, th of this. I know, you know, the uh, the episode was f more focused on uh, warp speed than impulse speed, but I feel like, you know, one should kind of reflect the other because, I mean, you're not going to be having much combat in warp speed. I didn't see the need to do anything with the inertia rating. Uh, 60 is still pretty decent for uh, a ship of this size. Uh, I could have maybe bumped it up a little bit, but I didn't want to do too much with it because I already did so much with the speed. And honestly, it's already pretty high compared to most of these, like mostly 60, 60, 70, but I mean, the Defiant is a much smaller ship. 60, 65, the, the Manticore is at 80, which that surprised me. Um, 60, 50, 45, yeah. I mean, 60 seemed like a, a good amount to uh, for the Prometheus. I mean, maybe you could, maybe I could have bumped it up to 65, but I didn't I didn't see the need. Another error on this list. Uh, that's my bad. There, that's the the fleet Prometheus's uh, power levels. And again, this is another one where I didn't see the need to change them. The Prometheus the Prometheus was designed as a long range tactical ship, meaning it's meant to go out really far and you know deal some damage possibly. And uh, so I felt like, you know, plus 15 to weapons and plus 5 to engines kind of suited that, much like they did it on the original one. There was no need to change it. I mean, shields would be weird for this ship. Aux power would be even weirder. I mean, I guess I could have uh, changed it to plus 10 uh, for each of them, just evenly dividing it among the two power levels, just to give a little bit more into that um, factor of speed. But I didn't want to take away from the, from the uh, weapons potential, so I just left it as is. The big thing I did change, though, is the weapons layout. You can see I had this set for a 5-2-1, so that's five weapons in the front, two in the back, plus the experimental weapon. And uh, that's because this is an energy weapon build, and we all know energy weapon builds are better with more uh, focus in the forward damage arcs. That's because that way you can set them up with dual beam banks. Yeah, but the nice thing about these is you could still do broadsiders if you want, but again, this is just better suited for it. One of the things I really fought for on the Legendary Akira video was that I really wanted it to be a 4-4 weapons layout because that's supposed to be a torpedo build and 4-4 is better for torpedo builds. And a lot of you kept arguing with me about that. It's like, no, it should be a 5-3. No, it shouldn't. But here, this one should be a 5-2, though. You know why? Because this is supposed to be an energy weapon build. This should be 5-2 or 5-2-1 because, you know, the experimental weapon. Don't say 5-3 because then that makes it a warship or makes it a cruiser. This isn't a cruiser. This is this is a destroyer. Don't know why I'm getting so worked up about this. Just trust me, I'm right on this. Uh, it's got three device slots because destroyers always seem to have three device slots, except for the Klein for some reason. The, the Klein still has two, but all the other destroyers have three. So I just gave this three. Honestly, it's not going to make a huge difference either way. So yeah, just gave it three because all the other destroyers had three, except the one. Yeah, it's very, I don't know. Some of the stuff is so arbitrary. It makes no sense. Now, for the bridge officer seating, uh, this was the thing that always uh, really I have to spend the most time on just because there's so much variation that you can use. And ultimately, I didn't end up making a lot of changes to this. And in fact, you can see the base seating is actually identical. So we've got another commander tactical, lieutenant tactical, lieutenant commander engineering, lieutenant commander science and an ensign universal. So it's it's a pretty well-rounded um, uh, bridge officer layout. It's pretty heavy on the tactical stuff because, well, of course it is. It's an escort. We've got a decent amount of uh, engineering and science seating, and then we've got that universal seat that we can do whatever you want with. But yeah, 
The big difference here is the specialization seating, because this is a full spec ship. The uh, uh, of course, the commander seat, uh, the commander tactical seat gets uh, one of the specialization seats, and I'm wanting to make this an intel ship, so that's where the intel seat would go. And instead of command, I figured I would do Miracle Worker instead. Miracle Worker still makes sense for the Prometheus. In fact, I think it makes more sense than the command seat did on the original one. Because, well, the multi backdoor assault mode was kind of, you know, regarded as this huge feat of engineering. You know, it was just like this crazy thing that, you know, no other ship could do. No one had ever seen anything like it before, at least the Doctor hadn't, and the Romulans were clearly impressed with it. So, it, it, clearly, you know, Miracle Worker really fits the vibe for that in my head. Further on that, uh, I feel like the Miracle Worker seat really complements the Intel seat because, well, you know, Intel, you're going to have surgical strikes, that's going to be your firing mode, everything else is just going to be unconventional systems triggers, but the uh, the Miracle Worker seating, you can use that to further buff your, uh, your energy weapons. I actually had two options for this one, because originally this was the uh, second bridge officer layout I came up with, uh, which here, you can see that here, that, that's... Um, one of the things I like to do with these is when I come up with a bridge officer layout, I think about what I would put in those in those seats. So this is what I would do with this layout in the second one. So we got, yeah, the viral impulse burst, EMP probe, ionic turbulence, those are uh, the unconventional system triggers, surgical strikes three, because that's the main firing mode. Then we got chemocyte and torp spread in the tactical seat. You can probably, you know, move torp spread down to one and then put attack pattern beta there instead. Uh, up to you on there. Uh, then we got Emergency Power to Weapons 1, because you want that for uh, Emergency Weapon Cycle. Then we got Next Armament Synergy 1, because the Surgical Strikes build... One of the nice things about a Surgical Strikes build is that it'll buff all of your energy weapons, not just your beams or cannons like the other normal firing modes. This one's... it's all of them, so Mixed Armament Synergy is going to mix in... is going to mix in well with any sort of specialization firing mode, and currently Surgical Strikes is the only one worth using. And then, of course, Narrow Sensor Bands 3, because that's, you know, bonus damage buffs to your uh, energy weapons. And then down in the science seat, we've got uh, more uh, unconventional systems triggers. So that's uh, jams targeting sensors, scramble sensors, and uh, a gravity well, because that triggers unconventional systems. And it's also nice to have that amount of control. And then in the Anson seat, which is a universal, where I'm using tractor beam, because again, that's another unconventional systems trigger. But one of the nicer ones, too, because it's got a very low uh, cooldown. So that one's going to be triggering the most, assuming you're in range, because it does only have a range of five kilometers. However, the original idea I had, uh, I did kind of rearrange the uh, seating a bit more on my first thought. I, I went a little heavier on the tactical seating, uh, a little lighter on the engineering seating, and I swapped the uh, science and universal seats. My original thought was that the Prometheus was going to be, you know, since it's a long range tactical ship, it's going to be very heavy on the tactical stuff, but not so much on anything else. Uh, I went lighter on the engineering and went very light on the science, but gave it the universal seat uh, as a lieutenant commander seat. So you can use that as whatever you want, because I figured, you know, a, sh a long range ship like that would have to have some versatility. But then I realized, honestly, the original bridge officer seating kind of reflected that pretty nicely already. So it was already really tactical focused, but also nicely well rounded, but then give you a little bit of wiggle room with that universal seat and really it's a decent uh, setup. The only issue there is that it's just got the uh, the one specialization seat. So I had to figure I figured adding more specialization seating and tweaking that a bit. You know, that, that just it makes a huge improvement. And yeah, I honestly I like the second one better. So that's what I would do. Honestly, you could move the um, uh, America worker seat if you wanted. Um, I like it on the uh, engineering seat because engineering seat really isn't the best, but I mean, you could play around with that. The only thing, other thing I would do, like if they did want to move it, I would probably move the um, miracle worker seat to a uh, the universal seat and then drop the uh, engineering seat down to lieutenant and make the uh, or drop the engineering seat down to lieutenant and bump the uh, universal seat up to lieutenant as well. So. Yeah, that's the only thing I would do there if I was going to make changes. But like I said, I'm I'm pretty happy with that as is. Uh, beyond that, with the consoles, uh, 533. Again, that's pretty consistent across the board with most of these. Uh, basically, as long as an escort has five tactical consoles, it's fine. Even with four, you're fine because then you can just use the um, what do you call it? The T6 uh, T6X upgrade. That's that's just the current state of Star Trek Online. Tactical consoles are the only ones that matter. As long as you have at least four of them, you're fine. 
because everything else is just going to be universal consoles. Uh, it's not going to have any hangar bays because it's a destroyer. It will have the st destroyer mastery package because, again, it's a destroyer. That's the best one because uh, it's the same one they use on warships. So it's all offensive stats up to uh, accuracy, crit chance, crit uh, severity, and uh, energy and kinetic damage. Yeah. Uh, specialization seating, again, pr uh, primary temporal, secondary miracle worker. Uh, it would have f uh, for the full intel spec. It wouldn't have any special abilities because the last one didn't. Um, now these last two categories, these are new to this chart. And in fact, I'm seeing uh, a typo there as well. This was part of the uh, chart that I actually saved over this one. Uh, that was my bad. Uh, that's for a different thing. But yeah, the um, none of these have any special abilities like inherent stuff. So no like you know no swarm mode, no spinal lance, nothing like that. Also added a cloaking device category, which most of these don't have. Some of them do though. Like obviously the Talis has a cloaking device because it's a warbird. Uh, the Tal Shiar ship that just has a normal cloak. Uh, so does the Cardassian ship. I think they would give a leg if it was a full if it was a full Intel ship. I think they would give the legendary Prometheus a cloaking device, mostly because a lot of Intel ships seem to have cloaking devices these days, ever since the uh, the Intel revamp. Not every Intel ship has a cloaking device, but most of them do, and I don't really see a reason not to give it to this one. Mostly because a normal cloak really isn't going to make that much of a difference in combat, mostly because you can't activate it in combat. Now, giving it a battle cloak, that would be a huge difference, but I don't think they would give it a battle cloak. It'd be cool if they did, but <laughs> they won't. So yeah, uh, to review, uh, Legendary Intel Prometheus Advanced Destroyer, uh, a little high on the hull rating, uh, pretty moderate on the shields, uh, not high on uh, turn rate or inertia, but higher on the impulse modifier because speed is kind of one of the factors of a Prometheus, in my opinion. Uh, no changes to the power bonuses. Uh, make, uh, I did give it a 5-2-1 weapons layout because I do feel like that's just better. You know, just. It's just, it's just better. <laughs> All of us who play Sto know this. There's no reason to give it a 4-3 weapons layout, it's especially for a legendary ship. Bridge layout, um, I did give two options for this one uh, just because I had already worked on the other one too, but I do like this bridge officer layout better. It's not any different than the other one except for the specialization seating. And again, that is something they've done before in the past. Look at the, um, the legendary galaxy class. Its bridge officer seating is identical to the original, um, the, the fleet version of the Andromeda. All they did was just give it uh, more command seating. Uh, console layout uh, is the same because, again, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, they, you know, they, maybe they can go a little higher on the engineering seating or a little lower on the uh, on the engineering seating, give it to the science seat. As long as it still has five tactical consoles, that's fine. Uh, this would not have a hangar bay. There is one destroyer that does have a hangar bay. I almost put it on this list for comparison, but um, it's a weird one. The uh, the Nausicaan Seeds destroyers is why I, that's why I didn't include it on this list, just because they're they're outliers. They're they're one of the they're, it's it's one of these weird ships that really doesn't fit any archetype, but they just call it a destroyer because why not? It didn't really fit any other classification, but yeah. It's, I, I, that's why I left it off this list. It's, in, it's got some weird things on it. It's also got a, um, a spinal lance. They called it a javelin. Yeah, it's it's a weird ship. Um, yeah, I didn't think it, it wasn't really something I was going for with uh, setting this thing up, so I didn't bother putting it on here. But yeah, uh, hangar bay wouldn't have one. Destroy a mastery package. Intel primary seat, secondary miracle worker seat with a full intel spec, no special abilities, and maybe a cloak, I guess. I mean, it, there's really not going to make much of a difference just being a standard cloak. So, yeah, it doesn't really matter one way or another. But it being an Intel ship, I think it's kind of interesting for it to have a cloak. Now, unlike the last video uh, for the Akira, I had an idea of what we, they could do for a Starship trait for this one. And that's something that would buff the multi-vector assault mode pets on this. One of the big downsides to the multi-vector assault mode console is that the actual pets it creates they do very little damage. They're very ineffective in combat, and it's, it's actually the same for other consoles similar to it, like um, the saucer separation off the uh, the Galaxy or the Chevron separation off the um, the Odyssey. Same with the um, the Aquarius escort uh, console. Those pets just don't do anything that makes them worth using. They just they do whatever they want. They fire what little weapons they have. They do next to no damage, and then. They die, and there's no indicator that they've died. They just, you know, they just sit there dead until you've noticed it, and then you have to turn off the console, and then you got to go through the whole cooldown sequence. 
it's obnoxious. So I'm thinking maybe they could do uh, something with this Starship trait to buff the damage output of these uh, of these pets, these console pets. And I don't know, it's something I think would be kind of interesting just to make these old, older consoles worth using again, because right now they're just silly gimmicks. The idea I had was to just give them a straight 200% bonus damage buff, because, I mean, that's kind of how um, Independent Wingmate works. Um, we, uh, I, I played around with that in my um, build video for the Norway and the Seneca. We saw how, like, how much of a difference that does make to your um, your fighter pet's damage, and it's, that's only buffing the one single uh, hangar bay pet. So a starship trait that gives that much of a bonus damage buff to these you know, very ineffectual uh, pets from these consoles, I feel like it could actually make them worth using again. It doesn't have to be like a persistent buff, maybe it can only like trigger whenever you use a certain ability, like anytime you use a tactical ability or something like that. It gives the uh, these buffs to uh, maybe just one of the uh, the pets that's in range. I don't know, they, they critical balance it however they want. But something needs to be done to make these uh, consoles more interesting because right now they're just meh. And not having the multi-vector assault mode on a Prometheus does kind of sour the experience a bit because I mean, it was one of the key features of the ship, so I would want to be able to use that, but in its current state, it's lame. It's really lame. <laughs> yeah, those are my ideas for a possible legendary Prometheus class. Uh, fingers crossed someone at Cryptic is listening. Uh, they probably won't, because I don't know if they're actually allowed to, because legal reasons, but I'm going to keep doing these videos anyway, because they're a fun thought exercise for me, and uh, again, I'm kind of hoping someone at Cryptic is watching. Let me build a ship! Please, let me build a ship. I want to build a ship. I think I'd be I could do it. I can do it. Please. Okay, I'm sounding desperate now. Anyway, uh, if you guys like my ideas, let me know down in the comments down below, uh, or if you don't, um, I don't care what you do. <laughs> um, yeah, while you're down there, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. If you'd like to further support the channel, hit the join button to become a member, or hit the super thanks button, or the, um, what's the other one? The merch store! It's in the link in the description. Uh, either way, thank you so much for watching. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time. This outro got really unhinged. I really need to go to bed. It is five in the morning.